I'm Lindsay Smith with Real Agriculture. I'm joined now by Dr. Richard Earhart. He's with. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it again. Cut. This is the second talk that Richard did that day, and it's all about timing. When should we be breeding our ewe lambs? This is the thing I get asked a lot, even on my farm, about ewe lambs. When should we breed them? So this video, he has, he talks about all the things that we as producers should be um, aiming for, I guess, for optimal ewe lamb conception and number of lambs and all that stuff. So. I will let you watch that video. Because that. we don't do states yeah. in Canada. We don't have like the state yeah, it's universities, really right? Important, and I want to thank the university. Yep. Of, yeah, no, it's Michigan State. Yep. Okay, so Michigan State Excellent. University. Yep. Yes. Um, speaking here at the Ontario Sheep Convention, um, your second presentation, definitely a lot of producers in the room came, I think, for this one. Hmm. And it's the question of, you know, how early should we be breeding our ewe lambs? Yes. When should they be having their first lamb and what difference does it make? So there were, I think, several take-homes, but what are the considerations when we're talking about, you know, aiming to have a, a lamb, have our first lamb at 12-ish months versus 16? Yeah, um, one of the first considerations is even having them land. So basically, I look at it as should they lamb in kind of two questions. Should they lamb in the first year of life? And if so, when? Or or should they lamb like later in life? Like that was more traditional sheep production systems. We'd have a lamb at two years of age. So you know, two separate things. And part of it's dependent on well the main thing is your production system and your farm resources. So I kind of start there when I talk about this. If you have like the feed resource base and the production system that allows you to have, you know, efficiently feed your ewe lambs, give them the supplemental nutrition they need, it makes sense to have them lamb in their first year of life for a number of reasons. One of those is because it's been shown pretty well that if they lamb in their first year of life, they tend to have higher productivity during their life, and that is just even controlling for the fact they lamb as lambs. So if they if you take that lamb away that they had as a lamb and compare them in years two, three, four, and five, they still have more lambs in their life. So it's kind of a selection opportunity, you know, and have more productive sheep. Um, so that's that's one of the reasons you do it. Um, and just kind of getting, you know, if you, if you do have the opportunity to, uh, the feed resource space, to have them lamb as lambs, um, you know, not doing that, I guess, would, would be kind of a I don't know, you have dead assets in your flock. You know, you're not really utilizing your flock very efficiently. So those are some considerations there. All right, so now you did show on one of the slides, and it's one I've seen before, but when the time of year that a lamb is born is right, is going to impact yeah. when she does actually reach maturity, right? So yeah. we've yeah. got our February born lambs are going to take slightly longer. Mm -hmm. And so the sort of, not I'd say the ideal, but the, the sort of most efficient are Mayborn lambs, but they need to be a sufficient size and weight mm -hmm. to actually hit puberty, but then also to catch. So what's the magic there? Yeah, so what you're referring to is the influence of season. So sheep are seasonal breeders. And so yeah, there's seasonal cues, there's nutritional cues and seasonal cues that influence when they reach puberty. So you know, lambs born in May, are going to be exposed to the kind of light in their development that's going to make them reach puberty quicker than especially ones born in the fall. They're the longest, the ones born in midwinter are kind of in between. But yeah, you overlay the season with nutrition and those are some interactions to consider when you do this. So one of my questions then yep. is, um, so let's say we've got younger lambs, mm -hmm. should we be aiming for a, a certain size, like a percent oh, of mature yeah. size before we're going to put those rams in? Yes, certainly. So if you have the, like, let's say they're in the right light conditions, you want a minimum, I'd say, of 60, maybe closer to 70% maturity. So what I mean by maturity is how much of their mature size, their ultimate size they attain as adults they've achieved. And the reason why that's important is it happens that much with the way all animals grow is when they hurt a certain maturity, just like people, they tend to reach a certain level of fatness. You know, and that kind of is Mother Nature's signal that the animal is capable of having enough nutrients to support a pregnancy. So when they hit about 70% mature size, 
that's the right signal for them to you know have a successful pregnancy. So that's that's our kind of our target. You can go a little bit earlier with some breeds because some breeds are genetically disposed to having uh, puberty a little earlier. Other breeds may who are really late, maybe a little later. That's a good rule of thumb, seventy percent. So one of the things I found very interesting is that um, you know obviously so we're talking size, we're talking you know, time of year, but you mentioned that potentially having one or two cycles before they have a pregnancy, that can actually lead to potentially better production just because mm -hmm. they've had uh, more more lactation tissue to develop and whatever. Is yeah. that is that a rule of thumb that we should let them maybe have a feed or two? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of putting a few things together there. That hasn't been like shown experimentally in sheep so much, but in other species it has. And it kind of, it's more like it stands to reason. Certainly we know that each estrus cycle that they have after each puberty, they get a little more mammary development. And so you know, I've kind of matched that with the observation that ewes are just a little older. Like if we have them lamb, I think I showed in the slides, at 12 or 16 months, same genetics, same season, um, they definitely milk better. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, that probably is one of the explanations is they just have more estrous cycles, um, and therefore they're they're more their mammary is more developed. Even another aspect of it is they seem to have fewer lambing problems as well. So there's something there as well. All right, and last last question or, or sort of observation that I I thought was kind of neat was you know making the point on the production side that you know make sure you're scanning at, at that 40 days once the rams have come out because those lambs are still young enough that should they be open you really you can get them out the door get them to market and and keep moving on right you're not hanging on to lambs so how long if is that after two cycles or how many chances do you give a you lamb and then you make that call okay yep Generally, I think it's just a normal mating period when it was normal, probably two cycles. So you expose them for like 30, 34 days. I think that would be a good, like, reasonable time period to expect them to become pregnant. Yeah, and after that, you still have the opportunity. It'd be sort of 40 days after breeding season. They're still young, relatively young. They're certainly lambs, pretty much. And so, yeah, they have, like, called salvage value or good market value because you know they're, they're good market animals still and they, hit, they still hit the same high price schedule you see for them so all right thank you so much yeah you're very welcome my pleasure thanks good